In the first example, we run polynomial regression with one predictor, that is, the age of the fish. We can also run polynomial regression with two or more predictors. When we have two or more predictors, we can also examine the interaction between predictor 1 and predictor 2. In this example, we have multiple predictors. An experiment is designed to relate three variables, temperature, ratio, and height, to measure to a measure of odor in a chemical process. Each variable has three levels. We can analyze the data using a response service regression, which is essentially polynomial regression with multiple predictors. The data file is chemical odor Excel spreadsheet. So first, uh, we still compute the square term of the predictors. Temperature square equals to temperature square. Ratio square equals to ratio multiply ratio. Height square equals to height multiply height. Then we build model one. Model one is a linear model, y order, tilt, temperature plus ratio plus height plus temperature square plus ratio square plus, plus height square. Summary is model that one. We can look at it. Here we have six predictors. The individual predictor of temperature, ratio, and height, and the square terms of each of them. As you can see, ratio was significant, height was significant, temperature square was significant, and the ratio square was significant. The overall model explains 86.83% of the variance in the chemical order. F stats, F stats is 8.789, and p-value is 0.004. Because some predictors was not significant, we can actually fit model two. Linear model y order equals to temperature plus ratio plus height plus temperature square plus ratio square. And we can summarize model two. Here we have three first order predictors, temperature, ratio, and height. And we have two second order pre, uh, predictors, temperature square and the ratio square. Both temperature square and the ratio square were significant. Finally, I want to explain how to decide between two equations, such as linear versus quadratic. There are generally three methods to determine which model we should use. The first method is called the build-up procedure. That is, first, we examine the linear equation. If the linear equation is significant, second, we examine the quadratic term. If the quadratic equation is significant, third, we examine the cubic equation. Until we don't have any significant higher-order term anymore, then we stop. This is the build-up procedure. Secondly, we can also use a teardown procedure. That is, we first examine the highest order term by some criteria. This criteria including traditional significance level, effect size, or confidence intervals. Using the traditional statistical level, then we usually use P of 0.05, when the highest power the term is significant at the 0.05 level, we keep the highest order formula. The second criterion is change in R square. This indicates the effect size. For example, we can examine the change from the one predict model to the two predict model in the squared semi-partial correlation of B with the criterion over and above A. 
that is we use this we examine the same same power calculation r square y v dot a this equals to the overall r square minus r square contributed by predict a divided by one minus r square contributed by predictor a this formula will tell us what variance what additional variance is explained by the quadratic term the power term then we can compare this effect size against the criterion set by cohen cohen suggested that 0 0.02 suggests a small effect size 0.13 suggests a moderate effect size and 0.26 suggests a large effect size if the effect size we found according to this formula is moderately high then we should stay with the quadratic model instead of the linear model the third method is to compare the figures we can examine linear versus quadratic versus cubic by examining the residues i introduce the lowest curve it is a non-parametric curve that follows the data and chooses the xy relationships the left figure is the lowest curve based on the data then we can create a residual scatter plot that is we predict the criterion from the linear regression y hat equals to b1x plus b0 then we compute the residual y minus y hat then we plot x against this residual the scatter plot is presented on the right if this scatter plot between y and the residual or between x the predictor x and the residual follows a pattern in this case there is a strong pattern between pre predictor x and the residual that is once the strong um, that is when x is either low or high the residual is small when x is moderately high the residual is large in this case it is quite likely that the correlation between x and y is collinear instead of linear that is when we remove the linear function between x and y x significantly strongly covalently related to the residual of the y so in this case we should go with the covalinear relationship this summarizes our class for today now you can upload the r script and output to the canvas as the homework for today i'll see you next week